eight. All right. How is everybody doing tonight? We are so excited. We're using a brand new platform. Oh, like brand new. <laughs> okay, guys. So we have some. We actually have had some questions, private message to us. So tonight we get to talk about um, all of the things that experts and maybe other blended families, maybe churches, other people that say um, that they that it takes time. We want to debunk that. We want you guys to see that. So welcome to our group. Our group is called... Uh, blended Blended Families Thrive. Okay, guys. So Blended Families Thrive, we are, means somos, we are a blended family that is thriving. So it's super excited. Uh, We're super excited to have you here. Can you tell we're a little bit nervous? Um, Number one, because it's a brand new platform. So we haven't done one like this before. So please hang on with that. Make sure, guys, when you are in the group, that you tell us exactly who you are talking about, stepdaughters, stepson. I'm not saying to share their names, their weights, their social security number or anything like that, but make sure that we're not using acronyms. There are a lot of groups out there that use these acronyms that honestly, as a former special education teacher, we had so many acronyms. It was like, oh, this kid is BED and he has an SED and we need BIP and we need... And it's unless you went to school and you are doing that every single day, um, that is not a good story for all of us, right? We want to shake it up and say and show people that we actually don't have to live in acronymville, right? Like like incognito, like the BP of the CP of the. It gives me a headache. So. Whoever you're talking about it, just say it. My my brother, my ex, my father, my girlfriend, my wife, whatever it is, just tell us what it is. And we will be glad to understand quicker because that is what this whole thing is about, is getting there quicker. And if you don't feel comfortable enough to uh, put a comment in the down below and you don't feel like that, you can private message us. Yeah, please do. We do get a lot of private messages um, that go into deeper and we want to share with you the link so that you can um, make sure you sign up for a breakthrough session, which are 45 minutes long. And we get to talk to you and delve in deeper as exactly what is going on. So on today's call, we want to ask, are you sick and tired of being told that you need time, honey? You know that you blended this company and this family and these kids and all this stuff. You know you need time. Time. Um, Here's what you might think. Because there are so many experts that say, yes, you need time. Don't mess with the child. Don't just forget about like uh, confusing the child with so many differences. Honey, can you tell how different we are? We can confuse some people. But we want to just give you that knowing that we know you can get there faster no matter what color you are, no matter what race you are, no matter how old you are. Matter of fact, I'm actually six years older than him. No matter anything, where you're from, you can get there faster and thrive quicker. So here, um, And I guess one of the things that I wanted to talk about is, let's say you have a child or you yourself have diabetes or low sugar, and you're about three hours away from your house, and all of a sudden your sugar starts crashing, but you are not going to get home for three hours, and you left on a crock pot some food for the whole family, and you are not going to get any food, and no, I'm just going to do it all the way into there, because why would I waste money to uh, do get some food out here? So there's a few things that are going to happen. Number one, you're going to pass out in the hospital or you're going to have to go somewhere, right? Number two, you're going to confuse the heck out of your children because it's like, wait, mommy's sick. Stepmom is sick. Uh, Daddy's girlfriend is sick and she doesn't want to get some food. What the world? Who are you showing that for? And then number three, you're not going to make it if you're waiting for time. So 
Speaking of time, this is Casey McBride and I am Jamila McBride. We are the McBrides. Yes. <laughs> and Casey actually has a really good, um, he's really good on being able to quickly build rapport. Can you share with them exactly like how you build rapport so fast? Um, since I've worked in the educational system for going on five years and in and out of other areas of dealing with kids. Um, like one of the quickest things is just trying to pick up on like what the student has on or what the child has on, but really the quickest way is just relating with them in their own world, in their own ways. For example, like my own son, we have butted heads like constantly mm -hmm. almost for years, it was like butting heads, butting heads, butting heads. But until like finally, I just said, all right, I've had enough of this cycle we keep going through. And I'm like, what can I do to relate to him? And one of the quickest ways was through gaming. So actually, I ended up getting hooked into the gaming by just getting down to his level, getting to his world and not trying to be like, well, I'm an adult. You need to listen to what I have to say. Right. And, yada yada this but through our gaming we've built relationship through that and i've got into his world because before it was just shut down it was always a, a what or why mm -hmm. all those type of questions that i'm sure you hear of very frequently and then i mean i would feel the guilt right because uh the situation with our family is that my our first son the 19 year old his father passed away when he was three years old um, and he's also African American and Colombian, and he, we, I take him into a family with this white man. So he already had a bunch of stuff piled onto him, right? Stories, and then I also did not help the situation because I also was, oh, I feel so bad, poor baby, poor all this stuff, rather than allowing um, things to happen quicker because it's possible. So tell me a story about your classroom. Like when you're in your classroom, tell me what happens when they call you because he's the one that actually gets called when poop hits the fan. Well, one of the stories that comes to mind is this story with this girl I had no connection with, didn't even know who she was. I've seen her in the hallways, never reached out to her or anything because she wasn't in my grade level, but they called me in one afternoon and I'd rushed down there thinking it was a kid like flipping over a desk or whatever, but no, it was just this girl that refused to get up. She'd buried her head in her lap and it was just another teacher and they were wanting her to go to her specials, which was a science class. And this is a middle school. So this girl was like very like defiant. And um, I went into the room and I'm just, slowly like trying to assess the situation and as i was in there talking to her she wasn't even talking to me so i'm like thinking oh my goodness i might not be able to help this girl and then i heard they had asked for someone else and i'm like no i'm gonna get this because i'm a determined person like i'm going to break you to get you out of this funk you're in so started doing some of my strategies and one of the things I like to pick up on, especially with elementary kids, they always have some type of superhero or some type of outfit on or shoes or something that they like look at as like a celebrity or something that they admire. And for this girl, it was she had on this Wonder Woman shoes. So I hit on that, started talking to her about Wonder Woman, just cutting up, getting to her level, like playing around with her, like laughing and Sure enough, that broke her. She lifted her head up just a little bit, but still she was kind of resistant, but kept on pushing, kept on making like fun of some of the situations that were going on, just laughing with her, cutting up. And at that moment, she had broken. They would already tried to bring in some other teachers, but they didn't get there in time because I'd already broke this girl from her being the defiant, like something was going on deeper, but I was enough or able to quickly get to her, break her, and get her to where she needed to be. And right after that, it was like, there was already a relationship connected right there. Like the day she went to the bus that afternoon, it was, she came up, gave me a hug and smiling at me. And it's like, I don't even know this little girl. 
Right. And so even though you don't know your stepchild uh, because you only have them every other weekend or you only have them in the summertime or you live states away from them, when they come to you, a lot of people's perception is, okay, well, I can't impose exactly what's going on here. I can't um, be overbearing. I can't say, you know, answer these questions. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Or you feel like you're walking on eggshells. Stop the insanity. Eggshells stink unless you're eating your eggs. And that was kind of goofy. I'm sorry. I am a little bit goofy. I hope that you can also understand that both Casey and I are night and day. Which, yes. a, <laughs> which a lot of people would say, like, number one, like how and who and where and what and all that stuff, uh, opposites do attract. And with opposites, though, you would think, like, it's going to take even longer. But Casey and I's courtship was pretty quick. We've been together about almost 11 years. This Christmas will be 11 years. We've been married. It'll be nine years um, in February. And um, what we noticed is that because we connected so quickly, that that was really exciting um, to then find out the fastest route to blend all the family well. So I say that because both of us have been educators. I worked with the school system, three different school systems for almost 20 years. And what I noticed is that kids are very resilient. It does not matter how much pain they've been in. It does not matter where they're coming from. They could be the poorest of the poor, the richest of the rich. They are more resilient than we give them credit for. And so in a classroom, every single year, children get a new teacher, get new expectations, get new friends or not, maybe new enemies, maybe new bullies, maybe new experiences, but they adapt to it. Some even move to different schools. Some even move, exactly, like when you're going from elementary to uh, middle school. One of the things is that I actually calculated how many schools I went to um, up until I graduated high school. And I went to 27 different schools in four different states. Children are very resilient guys. We could not be saying this if number one, we did not go through that. And number two, we did not see how great these kids work for us in the classroom. My deal with kids is that I challenge myself not to write them up, not to send them to the office, right? It wasn't that I was going to even fight with them or, or like match up and say, you know, how dare you uh, disrespect me and stuff like that. What we found out is that there's something deeper going on in them. So we just kind of let them. If they want to come and throw a hissy fit or a tantrum or something like that, we listen. Although he's way better at listening deeper with him, I'm able to hear exactly what is going on. Um, so yeah, it doesn't take time. It really doesn't, time is an illusion. Time is in your hands. I mean, like another thing with time is, that's one of the things we keep hearing. It takes time, go slow into your blended family. And for us, I mean, it took us many years to get to where we're at, but because we only decided we were like fighting with each other, fighting with the kids. I mean, we didn't really have, and we tried to find help. We tried to find books. We tried to find information and, and it was very little out there at the time. Mm -hmm. But in this past year, we have like came up with our own solution. We've like got sick and tired of like, being like fighting every single night almost. I mean, yeah. to the point like where our kids that go between different houses, they don't even, they didn't even want to come back here. Right. And even our own kids that stayed here a hundred percent of the time, they're like, I want to move out. <laughs> and they're like five. And then we like look at each other and we understand we love each other. And that's what kept us together. That's what kept us fighting, but we were fighting against each other. Right. And the more he fought, I would push against and say, how dare you? And the more I fought, um, I, he would push against me too. So what we've come up with over the last 12 months is that at any moment, 
any moment that you are ready to be able to say, screw this. I'm tired of walking into this house and feeling like I can't say this or I can't say that. I am tired of having to deal with the baby mama, which is the BM, right? I thought that was terrible to give an acronym of BM because I'm not a bowel movement. I am the baby mama um, or the exes or the in-laws of, I'm just tired of people trying to control our household. And it wasn't until we found those strategies that help our family that we knew instantly, but not just our family. We got to work with many other families this year that we were like, holy smokes, this is for real. People could be in peace now. Yeah, They don't have to wait. They, I mean, waiting uh, crock pots. How, how many of you guys um, actually cook in crock pots? I love cooking in cro crock pots, but not if I'm sitting there watching it. I love crock pots because I leave it. I go shopping. I go to work. I go do whatever I need to do. I come back. It's done. What we are talking about is microwave style. What we are talking about is even more than microwave style. Ninja cutting up. <laughs> blending everything up at the same time. Now, mind you, I'm not talking about shoving what you say to them, right? Because pushing is going to be get more pushing back. But we believe in blending the right ingredients together to have a blending family that's thriving and all that stuff. So we want to share that time with you and we want to be able to talk with you guys as to what is going on and how you too could be blended and brilliant because we believe that. Is there anything else you want to say, babe? I believe um, like one of the things that's pushed me along is I believe in that a lot of things can be moved along faster, not this slow pace that takes a decade to fix something or five to seven years to fix a situation because say you have a teenager and you're waiting, it takes about five to seven years to work through this issue. The kids are already going to be out and graduated, going to college or whatever it may be. And you've just lost your opportunity. I mean, it's not really lost. It's just now they're out of your house. Now you can really have your life. Right. But that relationship's either going to get fixed later on or it's gone on because they've moved on. But our belief is, because is, we've lived it, is that things can be done very quickly, rapidly. And, and it can. And it can for the sake of your relationship. Because why did you get involved in this family? It wasn't because of the kids. It wasn't because they're going to stay together. It was because of this honka chonka monka. I mean, seriously, it was because we want to be together. It's because we want to love each other. And the more we kept on looking for data and statistics and we found out that only 25% of us make it, we said, heck no, no way. We believe we are better than that. And not only are we better than that, we were created for greatness, just like you were. And I know like when I first when we first started this relationship, I knew I was, I'm always been driven by trying to prove people wrong. If you tell me I can't do this, I'm going to prove you wrong. And I know when we got into this relationship, that was my get go is like when I was a teenager, I had a, I was a, in a blended family. So I thought, Hey, my dad did it. Heck I can do it too. So when I got into it, I'm like, I'm going to fix the situation, correct everything. Everything's going to be smooth selling in a month. And it was like, Oh my goodness, what the heck did I get myself into? <laughs> and it's like, can I get out? I wanted out almost. And I'm like, but you said you're going to stick it out. And that's right. what kept me going is like, I'm going to stick it out. And I did search and I did try to find ways, but there was no answers at the time. And there oh. was very little. And if it was any answers, it's, oh, it's not going to work. They're just going to, your stepkids are just going to hate you. And then, I mean, it was just all this negativity. And that's where this past year we've like we've been slowly progressing to where we're at. But the thing is, this year we have found the strategies to accelerate that. Right. And those are the strategies that we can help your family excel 
over the next eight weeks. So call us. Um, we have put in the link, that's probably why you just saw my face down if somebody uh, was commenting, but we put in a link so that you can go ahead and set up a time for 45 minutes. Guys, I'm not kidding you. Life is amazing when you can finally have peace in your household and people could go in and out. Matter of fact, right now, two kids are here and two kids are not here. We won't see one of them until Monday. One of them will come back at 11.30. But the fluidity, it's there because we said now is the time. Now is the time for you guys to have a great family. All right. Reach out to us. Thank you so much. We are the McBrides. Yes. And we are here to serve you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hold on.